Hey, this is Bill's Vader, and you're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew and Justin. May the Bills be with you. Go Bills. Hello and welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show here on the Built-in Buffalo Network. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me, as always, is my co-host Justin Goddard. Well, not always because, uh, you know, things are in the off-season and when we're in the off-season, news doesn't come by so often and me and Justin are a little busy, so occasionally you'll find episodes where it's just me or it's just him, but uh, in any event you're bound to get a good episode from one of us. So uh, thanks for listening. And as always, you can find us on most social media, podcasting platforms, and of course on YouTube by searching up The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can find me at Two Changs and Justin at JGods22. Justin, I know that was kind of a long intro, but uh, it's been a minute since you and I have been together. But uh, <laughs> how, how are you doing this Sunday afternoon? Hey, man, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, excited to uh, have both of us on the show together. Um, kind of taking our, our little breaks where we can during the off season. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you and I got together and we played some football on Thursday and I'm starting to feel a little bit better, but I'll tell you what, man, I, I have been sore and nursing some, some muscle tightness for a few days. Um, just a quick little getting out there and doing it for a day kind of refreshes my, my respect for these players and, the ages they get up to and how they're able to stay healthy for a full season. Cause I'm 31 man. And I was not feeling good for, for a few days in there. Hmm. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great point, Justin. We, we definitely take for granted sometimes how, how much we want from these players. Cause you and I played from what, uh, TSC and Rochester from eight to 10, 10 30. And I mean, I felt fine, but I, I, you know, I do, I work out a, a decent amount, so I wasn't like too bad, but I still felt the effects of it. And we were just playing flag football. Could you imagine me just, just barreling into you as you're trying to make a catch? We, <laughs> like we did like, thanks. we did like one non-contact practice walkthrough and I was out of commission for three days. <laughs> yeah. So it's. <laughs> it's a lot that we ask of these players. And speaking of the Buffalo Bills, we have some related news that we got to go through before we get to our uh, weekly segment of 13 reasons of why we should be excited for the upcoming season. And we got to talk about Saran Neal. And if you don't know by now, he got extended three years, $10.9 million, uh, which sounds like a lot, but we don't really know what that actually means. Right. We always see people get signed like, oh, my God, this guy got twenty five million dollars a year. But does he actually get all twenty five million of that? Probably not. I would I would go ahead and say that there's got to be a lot of incentives. Um, if you're like an injury prone player such as Carson Wentz uh, or Matt Milano, there's. You know, not saying Matt Milano is like the worst injury prone person, but he's he's been known to miss some time on the field. But you'll probably see something in their contracts. And I'll stop real quick. I am no expert with contracts. I don't know how they do that. So I could be completely wrong. So let me continue with that note that people there's probably something in their contract where it's like, all right, you got to play for x amount of percent for the entire season or x amount of snaps or you got to hit this crazy unlikely incentive in order to fully reach the max potential of that contract i suspect that there's probably you know something in there with saran neal's contract um and even if it's not i don't think it's completely outrageous that he got this contract because he's really good on special teams and not to mention he can fill in on defense when we need him and i'm gonna go back to the first kansas city chiefs game of this year when he was he was gunning on a play and there were three chiefs players lined up against him like you you think that 
Do you think having one person on Saran Neal is like, okay, that's that's pretty good. Two people, okay. But you got to send three people on this guy? That means you're doing something right. And <laughs> I'm all about it. And then referencing later in that game, I believe it was the same game, there was a moment where he, we were without Matt Milano, and he was on defense playing against uh, guarding Travis Kelsey, which is great because he can fill in when – Stuff like this happens. Uh, Justin, I know I hogged the mic a decent amount of time when it came to Serrano, but I'm just really excited that he's back. And and our special teams, although we're going to be out w- w- uh, without Heath Farwell, and now we got Matthew Smiley, that our special team's ace is coming back. Yeah, there's a, a lot to unpack there. With with the contract, the, the first look at it, it, the number's a little high for me. Um, but then all the things you kind of got into, like what, what kind of playing time bonuses are there? And, and we won't really know those contract details, um, for a while. I'm, I'm sure there's something built in of like, if you play X amount of snaps on defense and then, you know, you kind of try to avoid those things. And, and if he hits them, he hits them. Um, but I think Mm -hmm. this is kind of, for me, the, the investment into the future of the special teams and, this regime has has been known for focusing on special teams, um, and s- some of the players that were like that are and were our special teams aces, um, they're commanding decent contracts. And mm-hmm. you think of a guy, Tyler Medikavich, Taiwan Jones, you know, people that we weren't afraid to pay just to play special teams, and with with a couple of those guys getting a little bit older. Um, whether or not they're going to be around in the next few years. I think Saran Neal is kind of that that step towards the future of, okay, this is going to be our, our centerpiece special teams guy. Mm-hmm. If we lose some of those other pieces, um, we're going to fill in the, the positions around that. Um, so overall, I, I love the move. I, I don't want to see him out there on full-time defensive snaps. I don't think... I don't think he's but he really could do it. He could. I don't think he's fully developed into that, you know, top caliber starting player, but for spot duty and, you know, filling in in some sub packages, I, he's kind of like the, um, who was that cornerback that we brought in from Carolina? Uh, Daryl Cap- Worley? Captain. I don't know. Oh, no, he was on Dallas's practice squad. Oh, Captain. Yeah, Captain. Yeah, I, f- I forgot. His last name's escaping me, but I. Oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. look at Saran Neal to kind of take over that kind of like flex position and and still mostly focus on special teams. And special teams is important for what this team does. So I, I like mm-hmm. the resigning. Yeah. And you mentioned some other special team aces that are currently on the Bills, such as Taiwan Jones, although he is a free agent, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And then Tyler Medikiewicz, amongst other you know, uh, other special team aces that we have. But those three really kind of stand out to me outside of the five other linebackers that we <laughs> rostered <laughs> for that reason. Um, but I, I will say that it, I'm just going to talk briefly about these two. Tyler Medikavich, I'm pretty sure we can free up some money by releasing him. So I don't know if this move necessarily forecasts that possibility. But, it, you know, only from where I'm sitting it makes it more likely to happen now for fiscal reasons and because yeah like we got we got our guy here so he's younger he's faster i don't know i i I love tyler medikavich but he doesn't really bring anything on defense uh specifically on defense brings a lot to the table just like saran neal on special teams but not so much on defense and then taiwan jones god i love this dude it doesn't matter. He's probably the only person that I've seen on the Buffalo Bills injury report with a hamstring on a week-to-week basis, and they still go like, all right, get out there. Then he's like, all right, I can do it. He's the only person I know that uh, that in this entire Sean McDermott regime that I've seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below if I'm missing someone, but I swear this guy is literally the only person I've seen on the injury report with a hamstring and has been consistently put out there week to week. So, 
Yeah, Taiwan Jones for me, I, I don't remember who the opponent was, but I remember uh, there was a game where his helmet came off. Chargers. And he was, yeah, he's bleeding from the face, and he's just like still playing. Uh, after that game, as long as Taiwan Jones wants to play football and we can keep him on a reasonable contract, it, he can stay with the Bills as long as he wants to, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I was at that game. I'm pretty sure that was Josh Allen's first start, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, I, I I remember looking up at the photos afterwards, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he kept playing. Yeah. Jeez. Even even after getting cracked, I was like, oh, my God. Jesus. All right, and now we got to transition to, I guess, the other, and I'm using air quotes here, other news here, and that's that Rob Gronkowski, uh, sorry, Rob Gronkowski, <laughs> uh, is – most likely gonna land with the Buffalo Bills per like betting odds. And I'm not a huge better. I don't know how people come up with this kind of stuff, but I it seems like people are like one way or the other with Rob Gronkowski, right? So here's a guy. I'm pretty sure he went to Williamsville North. Buffalo guy wanted to went through the draft and you know, he, he had a chance to get drafted by the Bills. Obviously, that didn't happen. And he got picked up in the second round by New England. Destroys the Bills in his entire tenure as a Patriot. Then he moves over with Tom Brady to go to uh, Tampa Bay. And he wins a Super Bowl ring. He plays again. And now he finds himself as a free agent. Now, we know Brandon Bean last offseason did toss some money at him saying like, hey, come come home come home and he was kind of from what i saw he was he was really contemplating it but he he elected to stay with his best buddy tom brady and i understand why he did it right he he, he's got a lot of rapport with tom brady he doesn't he doesn't have rapport with josh allen but this offseason there is a real possibility if he doesn't retire that rob gronkowski could be back in uniform but with the good old Buffalo Bills color. So I don't know how you feel about that, Justin. I'm going to hold my feelings for a second just to feel you out. So why don't you tell me how you feel about that? If he came here, what so, would you do? What so would you say? I, I think it's funny that you preface this with uh, like Bills Mafia kind of being divided on this. There's like no neutral so thoughts. True. It's so either true. like hell yeah or absolutely not. And I, I kind of land in the middle. Um, oh, come on. Give me if you had I'll, to pick I'll, one or the other right I'll, now. Right I'll, now. Sure. Right now. I'll take them. Um, I think there's a lot Backstabber. that goes. I think there's a lot that goes into it with a guy. You don't like, like Trey him. White, do you, huh? I, I hate Trey White. Yeah, you you just you wish you were Rob Gronkowski when you dropped the elbow on uh, him, huh? No, nah, Trey White's actually <laughs> probably, he's in my top three of favorite Bills players right now. I mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot that goes into it of Yes, the, the Trey White incident. Um, I think that the Bills do have a major need at tight end two. Um, we saw Tommy Sweeney inactive in games last year and only dressing one tight end, which is unheard of. Um, and I think if Gronkowski were to come in at the right price and kind of serve that tight end two role, I think mm -hmm. there is a need for that position. He could fill it well. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it would largely come down to money and if he's willing to take on that role. Um, right. But the major thing for me would kind of be what does that look like in the locker room? And I don't know if we need that. Um, so I, I would kind of, if I were Brandon Bean and I was thinking of this idea, I would kind of go unconventional and have like a team meeting and kind of just open forum it and, and let people kind of discuss where they feel about it. Because, you know, maybe, maybe being a few years ago and Trey white being the competitor, he is, he's like, Hey man, if this is, if this is the move that you think will get us a super bowl, let's do it. Um, maybe other guys, maybe I'm thinking like vocal leaders, like Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, maybe they're like, nah, what he did to my guy, Trey unforgivable. Um, right. So for me, it would kind of be how the locker room would feel about it. And if everything else makes sense and the team's cool with it, um, it's a position we need filled and it's a good player that could fill the position. 
Yeah, and naysayers to what you're saying would be, you know, because you said, yeah, take them. Why not? If if the money's right, right? Correct? Yeah. The naysayers would say, we don't need him. We have Dawson Knox. And yeah, that's true. And I agree with you. Dawson Knox is the man right now. He he is finally coming on and he shushed all the doubters this past season because I'm pretty sure he tied the league in touchdowns this year with Hunter Henry. So that's pretty cool. But people will be like, why do we need Rob Gronkowski? He's got like this kind of weird history of, you know, shitting on the bills. And I, I just don't, I can't think of a better word besides that. <laughs> Realistically, that's what he's, that's what he's done. And then he took that really egregious cheap shot against Tredavious White. I, I, I can't remember if he apologized or not. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I, I don't I don't really know, but I don't think he's that bad of a person. The only thing that's really bad is those goddamn commercials with <laughs> what, what what's it the USAA yeah. insurance companies? Oh my god, like I'm special. God. <laughs> like yeah, I'm just like I don't know. It they were they were cool for like a second, but after you just kind of get overexposed to him, you're like, oh my god, Rob, you you, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> but uh, getting back to it, let's just be realistic here. I don't think he's coming here, even though the odds would suggest that he would come here. Uh, yeah, if he was here, that'd be great. Because are you gonna tell me that he wouldn't be better than Tommy Sweeney? He's way better than Tommy Sweeney, probably. Tommy Sweeney's like a seventh round pick out of Boston College, and he made the fifty three man roster last year over a journeyman tight end in Hollister. Gronkowski's way better of a blocker, and he's definitely a Hall of Famer. So if we could get someone like that in the building, I'm not going to be upset. But it's got to make sense. In a locker room way, as you mentioned, and fiscally. So that's kind of where I lay, lay with that. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else to this, but I, I will say this. Brandon Bean, and I forgot what content creator said this, but Brandon Bean has done his job. He has put together a Super Bowl roster in back-to-back -back years. The team, and the team can only get better. And I mentioned this in reason number one. Brandon Bean is a huge reason to why the Bills are successful. He's put the pieces together. He's gotten the right free agents. He's hit on draft picks. If he brings this guy in, I, it's not like I'm going to be. I'm not going to be a sheep and just follow him blindly. Like there are some things that he's done that I don't agree with, such as the Star Lutule contract. But for the most part, he's got a really good track record. So if he brings them in. In being, I trust. So, yeah, I, I about agree with that. I, I think to your point, you know, a lot of people are like, "Why do you bring in Gronk? We have Dawson Knox," and like, that's fine. At, at this stage in Gronk's career, if he wants to come in and be like a one B tight end or like a, a bona fide number two tight end, it's it's a position that we have to address on this team either mm -hmm. way. Um, and sometimes it's kind of, you know, the, the enemy, you know, versus the enemy you don't. And could we fill the need with a draft pick, somebody else in free agency? Sure. But, at, at this stage in the off season where it's kind of like these outlandish thoughts get, you know, trade ideas and ridiculous free agent signings, it, it kind of makes sense to me. Will it happen? I don't know, but if. If he were to get brought in, I could get on board with it. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Stick around, and we'll be right back. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bill's dad. Now back to the show. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to wrap up this episode by picking up on our weekly segment of 13 Reasons of Why to Be Excited for the Buffalo Bills upcoming season. I am your host, Andrew Chang. You can find me on social media by searching up 2 Changs. You can find my other co-host, Justin, uh, by searching up JGods22, and we are the Water and Buffalo Podcast. Justin, it's time again. So let's do a little bit of a recap. 
Well, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into that, I want to shout out my guy, Owen. And Justin, you don't know who Owen is. But I, I mentioned, I alluded this earlier about a week ago. I was actually having a pretty bad day. I don't know why. I was just, you ever have those days where you're just kind of like grumpy and you're just like, you can't really figure it out. So I'm, I'm kind of upset for whatever reason. And I'm, I know I got to get over myself and this guy, Owen, don't even know him. I'm going to my uncle's restaurant to pick up my little cousin so we can go and watch a movie with her because she's staying over at my mom's i'm just you know just trying to be a good older cousin i guess and i'm sitting there in this restaurant and i'm I'm just kind of ups- uh, like annoyed and irritable for multiple reasons i'm not going to get into it but next thing you know th- this guy comes up to me who's owen and he he looks at me and he was like you seem very familiar and I looked at him and I, I'm looking at this guy like, I have no idea who you are, <laughs> realistically. And he goes like, do you do Bill's podcasting and on? are you on YouTube? And I said, yes. And he, you know, he's been, he tells me he's been a fan of 30 years. He loves what we do. Uh, Justin, he had high praise about you as well. And he told us to keep grinding and it was incredibly humbling and it, help me get over my you know negative mood but it it, i just want to say thanks to owen and to everyone who listens to this podcast because it's it's awesome you know we're like we're we're just normal dudes we're no armchair gms or anything like that is what people would say but we we're just normal dudes we love talking about bills and it was just awesome to see that someone was who someone just noticed me and was willing to come up and have a conversation with me. So needless to say, he, he was, he was awesome. So thank you, Owen. And, uh, I appreciate your time and your willingness to listen to us because we're, we're just a bunch of dudes just going on the podcast. (laughs) All right. So let's get back into the segment here of 13 reasons why to be excited for, the Buffalo Bills upcoming season. So we started with Brandon Bean. He's number one. Number two was Gabriel Davis. Number three, I believe you did the defensive line, correct? Correct. And then here's number four. And I I guess we kind of alluded to this earlier in the first half of the show, and that's Buffalo Bills. Buffalo has become the spot to be do you remember justin way back when where we had to overpay just to get someone in the building do you remember when every free agent would be like hey uh yeah i'll go there but i need a lot of money or you know what i'm not going to buffalo because they're losers they don't have good front office stability. Their coaching is atrocious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is no, that is no longer the case. And again, I kind of mentioned this on the, you know, Tredavious White medical reasons. Oh, that's another reason why to be excited. And I, I knew that I was missing something, but you know, our medical staff, we care for our players. The community comes around and comes together for the Buffalo Bills players. We have a winning culture. Sean McDermott's claps can be heard around the NFL. Free agents can hear the clap, and they're answering the call, at least most recently. I am loving the fact that the Bills are finally getting the respect that they deserve and it's it's hard earned, right? People don't people don't want to go to losing teams unless they're getting overpaid. Now we're starting to see some good contracts, and Bean has always been great with contracts. He doesn't overpay for people. He says, you know what, you want to come here, come here, but it's got to make sense for both of us. I'm not going to overpay for you to come here if you don't want to be here. And we've seen him cut cut ties with players with people who don't want to be here, who don't understand the winning culture, e.g. 
Quentin Spain. I have no issues with Quentin Spain, but he was an example of it. So for me personally, I think that the Bills and Buffalo, New York, Western New York, has a winning football team, and it's just really awesome because you can just see all the all the positive energy from multiple fans from outside of Western New York, even outside of the United States, come together and just say, I love the Buffalo Bills, and you can see that with free agency players and and people who get picked by us in the draft. Yeah, you started off saying there, like, you know, remember way back when when it was like this, and it it, it really was that way until just very recently. <laughs> yeah, and it, it wasn't only, you know, getting outside free agents in the building. It was, you know, retaining our own players, um, whether that was kind of just they didn't like Buffalo in itself or – you know, kind of the losing culture that was around the city. And we think about, you know, Marshawn Lynch wanted out. Uh, Stefan Gilmore wanted out. Did Marshawn Lynch, like, run over someone? Yes. In, like, Allentown? <laughs> yeah, he was like, I gotta get out of here. This this city. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was, he was, like, driving on Allentown, and he was like, I really gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. That, that's terrible to say. But... All that aside, I mean, a guy like Marcel Darius, too. And oh. I I feel like the Buffalo Bills then were kind of what we see. Mr. Big Stuff. Mr. I'm sorry. Big stuff. God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So I, I feel like the Bills then were kind of like what we're seeing in Jacksonville now. Of Kind of like they, they draft these good players and there's they're like hitting their form. And then by the time you get your return on investment, a guy like Jalen Ramsey, you know, one of the best cornerbacks in the league, well, he doesn't want to stick around anymore because you haven't put the product around him. Um, Mm -hmm. There's been a couple other players that wanted out of town like that. Um, So, I mean, looking at what we have now compared to then, um, you get a guy like Emmanuel Sanders that comes in for a lower contract than, you know, some of the other ones he could have got because he wants to go have a chance at winning a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives Bean the opportunity to kind of put a number on the position and say, you know, we want a guy at one year, $5 million for for this season. We're going to go for it. And Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, chasing down somebody and trying to beg them to come here. It's, you know, three, four, five guys that might be like, yeah, I could do that contract. And, you know, if somebody says, no, I'm not $5 million, I need $8 million. Well, we set the value and we have other people that, that are willing to take this offer. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it's, it went from like nobody wanted to come here and you had to chase and beg and overpay and really uh, court people to, to get them to even consider coming to Buffalo versus now it's kind of becoming this destination of especially players getting towards the tail end of their career that want to win one, you know, Mm -hmm. let me take this, this small deal and and be part of a winning organization. Um, which as you mentioned before, night and day from what it was even just, you know, five, six years ago. And Mm -hmm. it's really exciting to see that direction of the organization. Yeah. It, man, it's just so awesome. Like, (laughs) I, I'm gonna I'm gonna share like this quick story. So I lived in Buffalo because I went there. I went to UB for college, and I remember I was really starting to get into the Bills. Probably my sophomore year. Like I would watch them when I was younger, but not really. I didn't really understand the game of football that well. But you know, obviously living in Buffalo and being around Bill's Mafia culture before Bill's Mafia really blew up really helps, you know, expedite that process. So that was pretty cool. But I remember I was like, yeah, this is right after a year or two, maybe a year, yeah, second year after EJ Manuel got drafted. And I'm in Dick's because I'm working at the Melting Pot at the Walden Galleria. Shout out Melting Pot. One of the best jobs I ever had. And I, I'm like looking through and I see all these jerseys and this, this is going to hurt you, Justin. 
I see 95, 94, and number three. So, respectively, Kyle Williams, um, who Mario Williams, and EJ Manuel. I knew in my head, I was like, I'm not getting an EJ Manuel jersey. Like, no way. Uh, and I'm looking down between 95 and 94, and I grabbed the 94, Mario Williams. This guy recently came in. We overpaid the crap out of him. <laughs> To get him into Buffalo, and it's not like he he didn't do well, but that was a big contract at the time. And me not knowing the logistics of the salary cap and contracts, but in hind- at the time, but in hindsight, that was that was what the Bills had to do just to get people in the door. I wish I could. I don't have many regrets. But I wish I could go back in time and grab that 95 Kyle Williams jersey. You know where that 94 jersey is right now, Justin? Take a guess. Back of the closet somewhere. Hasn't seen the light of day in years. No, 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 no. It is falling into that rare, well, not so rare category of I let my ex-girlfriend wear this. And now it's hers. It's fallen into the hoodie zone. It is gone. And I am not upset about it. And I kind of won out because she got me a Josh Allen jersey. Hey. To this day, I still have that Josh Allen jersey. She has my Mario Williams jersey. I I don't have a problem with her, and I'm sure she doesn't have a problem with me. But I think I won... I won the divorce. You won You won the jersey swap. <laughs> yeah, I won the jersey divorce and the jersey swap. But uh, and I, Divorce is not the right word. I'll, I'll call it the, the breakup, really. It... <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny you have a story about the jerseys that kind of exemplifies the time. Uh, is there, was, there was a solid, like, I don't know, five, five seven years where... I wanted to get a new jersey because I I didn't have anybody that was currently on the team, but I would get to the point where like every time I would get a jersey, the player would be off the team like the next year. Like I got a Stevie Johnson, I got uh Jarris Bird, um the year before he went into like his holdout and ended up leaving town. Um I got Stop buying jerseys. <laughs> I got I got the Carlos Williams from my brother for a Christmas gift the year that he was blowing up. The next season he came in ends up getting cut. Sammy Watkins. I have a Marcel Darius and Yeah, stop buying jerseys. Yeah, so ironically the the one that I have that is kind of I have a Trey White who's currently on the team, but outside of that, my my one go to that I ended up I got it autographed, so now I can't wear it, is Kyle Williams. And that's mm. you know, like the one jersey that it doesn't matter how much time passes. Kyle Williams will always be a Bills legend to me. So, yeah, he's your fa- he's your guy. Yeah, that's my dude right he there. He is your guy, and it's hard. He, I mean, he's he's everyone's guy, right? As my guy, it's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my defensive tackle. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we kind of went off the the deep end here. So what what I'm getting, I'll, I'll wrap everything back up here. It's awesome that the Buffalo Bills don't have to resort to their old ways in order to get someone in the building. Players want to come here. And it's a mutual thing between the organization and the player. That's awesome. Now, if we had this kind of stability while you know the breakup was happening and Mario Williams' contract was a little better, let, let's say that happened right around now, I'd be I'd be probably outside the door like yo I need that jersey back. I'm gonna need that back. <laughs> I'm gonna need that back. Like you can have two to three of my hoodies for that jersey. <laughs> Seem fair? And I love my hoodies. I, I I got I got a good hoodie game. It's almost as good as my sneaker game. But you don't wear that's, any that's of them. For, that's that's for that's <laughs> for they're they're priceless. All right, in my. If, all right, we're not going to get into that. In any event, 
I, I don't really have much else to say here, but it is exciting to know that players want to come here and we've built that culture. And by we, I mean Brandon Bean yeah, and his I, company, not me. I had nothing to do with it, but it, it is it is a great time to be a Buffalo Bills fan. And it's like this, it's not even just on the field, it's on the field, off the field, um the thing you the things you see from the players in the community like all that Mm -hmm. it's kind of just it's like this retribution for all the years of bad football that we we stuck through and it's it's kind of just like paying out tenfold now so we definitely suffered for a long time but it's it's great to have this football team, the way it's constructed, the the types of players that we have in the building, it's it's just a really fun time to be a Bills fan. You know what I just checked? The, this this will be the last thing. She has blocked me on everything, <laughs> and it wasn't a bad breakup. I really I really don't think it was, but. Maybe she became more of a Bills fan and realized that I won out on that trade. Well, I wouldn't even say trade. The jersey ac- acquisition. <laughs> Just, she doesn't She's, want to give the Mario Williams. <laughs> Maybe she changed it to a Vernon Butler jersey and she doesn't want to give it back. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> Gotta have this Vernon Butler. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's podcast. (laughs) Um, Thanks for listening. Uh, Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, review our podcast. It'd be greatly appreciated. Justin, where can the people find you again? You can find us on, on, or find myself on any social media at jgods22. And you can find me on social media if you don't block me (laughs) at 2changs. Thanks for listening. And as always, Go Go Bills. Bills.